Good morning and welcome to the Better Scientific Software tutorial. I'm David Bernholt from Oak Ridge National Laboratory and I'm going to spend the first few minutes here getting you oriented to who we are and what we're going to do today. I'm going to skip over this slide. I'll come back to it later to explain it in more detail. So as I said, I'm David Bernholt. Uh, my fellow presenters today include Anshu DeBay from Argonne National Lab, Patricia Grubel from Los Alamos National Lab, Rinku Gupta from Argonne, and Greg Watson from Oak Ridge. We are members of the Ideas Productivity Project, which is part of the Exascale Computing Project. Ideas works together with the ECP community and much more broadly to try to improve developer productivity and software sustainability as part of increasing overall scientific productivity and scientific quality. We use a, a variety of approaches to pursue these goals. Uh, we're looking for uh, software development methodologies that can work effectively for research software. Uh, and, and scientific software. Uh, these are not always, you know, uh, techniques that are out there in the wild in the commercial software development world don't always apply well to research software because of the, uh, it's a somewhat different piece. So we look at what's out there. We try to um, engage with the community to understand what's working in the scientific community and how it can be adapted and, and um, to document it and disseminate it. We help people work to uh, incrementally and iteratively improve their software development practices. This is something we'll talk a little bit more about in this tutorial. We also work to establish software communities to give people um, opportunities to work together around software products, uh, something we call, for example, software development kits, getting um, groups of libraries or tools together to um, help improve their interoperability uh, and ability for users to, to use them together. And finally, uh, we also engage in a, a wide variety of community outreach activities. Uh, these include webinars, tutorials like this one, uh, and other events, especially at scientific meetings, where we try to give people a venue to talk about their software development experiences to complement the um, scientific uh, achievements that are usually the primary topic of such meetings. Uh, and finally, we have something we've launched called the Better Scientific Software BSSW.io website. This is a, a community resource for scientific software improvement. So really the point of this uh, space is to share information on uh, practices and tools and techniques to help uh, improve developer productivity and software sustainability for computational science and engineering software. This is a, a community organized and run uh, operation. So we would very much like for you to not only uh, find information we hope that will be useful to you here, but also contribute resources that we may not be aware of yet. Um, things that you've encountered in your own experience that you've found useful that, that uh, you think others would benefit from knowing about. If you find that you're interested in following more of our activities after this tutorial, I would encourage you to consider signing up for the Ideas Productivity mailing list and or the BSSW Digest. They have different content. Uh, the Ideas mailing list typically has two to three messages per month, and, and this is mostly announcing activities that we organize. Um, and the BSSW Digest comes out once a month, and that uh, highlights new posts during the month. We have a regular blog series. We, we publish about events that are happening in our community and also a variety of other resources uh, about software development practices. So those are a couple of ways you can um, find out more information about what's going on in this community in the future. One thing that I wanted to talk about uh, that is increasingly important in our community is the importance of naming and um, inclusive naming. Uh, a challenge is that computing is rife with terminology that many would consider harmful or exclusionary. And um, there are in, uh, growing movements to recognize this and replace with more inclusive language. This is an effort that we support and in this tutorial, we've strived to uh, use inclusive language. And uh, so for example, the, the biggest um, 
case you'll see in our tutorial is uh, when we talk about Git workflows in particular, we use the term main for the default branch for Git. Uh, some outside sources, uh, even things we reference, may still use the term master, um, but we've tried to make these changes. And we do welcome suggestions for further improvements in our tutorial with respect to inclusivity. If you're interested in finding out more about these larger uh, issues and the initiatives to, to make these changes in terminology, I encourage you to follow the links at the bottom of the slide. The Inclusive Naming Initiative is one uh, umbrella organization that's pursuing this. And we have a resource in BSSW .io that um, talks about the inclusive naming issue initiative and also provides some additional context and, and other resources that you may be interested in. Um, I also wanted to encourage you, make you aware of the BSSW tutorial website. That's uh, bssw-tutorial-github.io. Uh, this is the one URL that uh, you need to know to find all the resources for this tutorial. Once you go to that website, you'll find the page for this particular tutorial. Obviously, this is the SC21 tutorial. And if you go to that page, you'll see something on the right, like what's on the right. Um, and this is, this is basically the archival site for all the information for this tutorial. You can see there the agenda, so you know where we're going. Um, we have links to the slides which we put up on Figshare. We have all the instructions for the hands-on activities uh, and other information that may be useful. Something else here, the resources for presentations uh, includes all of the links in all of these presentations um, in, uh, on a web page so that they're a little more accessible than having to pull up the PowerPoints or the PDFs and click on the links. So we will uh, we we keep these we consider these pages archival as I said so you can always go there and find this information if you want to refer to the this BSSW tutorial and you may want to use it today as well. We do have some hands-on activities that go with um, what we're talking about today. These it's a simple physics example that we've selected, but you don't really need to understand any of the physics or math to do these exercises. This is a, a tutorial about software development practices and, and collaboration and things like that in software development. Um, and so it's not the math or the physics that's important. It's the working with the code and working with some of the other tools. We do have some time built into the agenda at the end of the day to work on the hands-on activities. If you want to get started early, for example, during the breaks, um, you're welcome to do that. You're also welcome to continue after the tutorial. And we, we can continue to interact with you uh, at any time. If you give us pull requests from the tutorial materials, um, uh, we will, or, or file issues, we'll look over those and respond. And once again, uh, all the hands-on information is available at the BSSW tutorial website. Wanted to go back now to that second slide that I flashed through before. This is in all of our presentations. We'll flip through it for the most part, but I did want to take a minute to explain what it is. Uh, this has the license citation and acknowledgements for the tutorial. So this is kind of one example, of, a first example maybe in our tutorial of a best practice, uh, although this is not necessarily software per se, it's a best practice to make your license and your preferred citations for your software easily findable by users so that they can um, do what you want, use it uh, in the way you want in terms of the licensing, and cite it in their papers uh, in the way that you prefer. We also include a sponsor acknowledgement that's uh, rarely uh, a bad thing. And in our case, our sponsor is the US Department of Energy Exascale Computing Project that's made it possible for us to bring this tutorial to you. And we thank them very much for their longstanding support for our work. Finally, um, we really do want to interact with you. Uh, these tutorials are for us the most interesting and informative if um, you ask questions and you share your experiences we learn from these things too and we bring them back into uh, future versions of the tutorial and our other activities so we would ask you to please use the zoom chat to ask questions at any time um, and if we have uh, time left in our segments uh, and also during breaks we can go uh, live for q a in person uh, we, we can also do some of that during the hands-on. 
right now, we'd like to begin by getting to know you a little bit. Um, and so I hope that you'll take a minute to uh, go into the Zoom chat and tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, uh, where you work, why you're interested in this tutorial. Um, if you work on the hands-on activities, as I said, we'll be glad to provide feedback. Uh, if you can submit a pull request or about any of these uh, hands-on activities or, or other um, uh, materials in the tutorial, you're welcome to email us as well at the link provided. Uh, and finally, just another reminder about the BSSW uh, website, tutorial website. And with that, we will get started with the rest of the show. Thank you. <laughs> 